Metamorphosis is the transformation in body form between developmental stages during an organism's life cycle. In insects, metamorphosis allows specialization at different life stages. For example, juvenile insects mostly feed and grow, whereas adults are specialized for dispersal and reproduction. Although metamorphosis is a factor that has contributed to the success of insects, not all insects develop this way. Those that don't undergo metamorphosis are called ametabolous insects. Ametabolous insects have juveniles that look and act like smaller versions of their adult counterparts. The only feature distinguishing them from adults is the lack of functional reproductive structures. Upon reaching sexual maturity, ametabolous insects continue to molt as they grow. These insects have never evolved wings and are therefore called aterogotes, which literally means wingless. An example of an aterogote insect that goes through ametabolic development is the silverfish. Only a small number of insects undergo ametabolic development. All other insects go through some sort of metamorphosis. There are two main types of metamorphosis. A simple type called incomplete metamorphosis and a more complicated type called complete metamorphosis. Insects that go through incomplete metamorphosis can have juveniles that are morphologically and ecologically distinct from the adults. This occurs in dragonflies and damselflies, in which the juveniles are aquatic, but the winged adults are terrestrial. Most other insects that develop through incomplete metamorphosis have juveniles and adults that are similar in body form and use the same habitats. This is referred to as hemimetabolic development. The lack of functional reproductive structures and wings is the only way in which hemimetabolic juveniles differ from the adults. This type of development is found in insects like cockroaches, grasshoppers, aphids, cicadas, and bedbugs. All insects that go through incomplete metamorphosis are exoterogotes. This means that their wings develop externally to the body during the juvenile life stages. Insects that undergo complete metamorphosis, or holometabolic development, experience drastic changes in body form throughout their development. Note that these two terms are both used to describe the same insects. Holometabolic insects have a characteristic dormant transitional phase between the juvenile and adult forms, referred to as a pupa. This is the stage when insects undergo their final developmental changes to become adults. In some insects, the pupa may be covered in a case sealed with or made of silk, known as a cocoon. Other insects, like some true flies, have pupae that develop within the exoskeleton of the final juvenile stage. This puparium is hard to protect the pupa inside. The adult emerges from the pupal exoskeleton in a process known as eclosion. This term can also refer to the hatching of a larva from an egg. Insects that undergo complete metamorphosis have juveniles that are very different from the adults. In many instances, juveniles of insects with complete metamorphosis occupy and exploit different habitats than the adults. These juveniles are referred to as larvae, not nymphs. Wing development in these insects always occurs within the body from groups of cells called imaginal discs. Because of this, insects that go through complete metamorphosis are also known as endoterogotes and form a distinct phylogenetic group called the holometabola. This group is extremely diverse and makes up an incredible 83% of all hexapods. The success of the holometabola illustrates the evolutionary importance of complete metamorphosis. The process of metamorphosis is controlled and regulated by hormones. A particularly important regulator is juvenile hormone. The role of juvenile hormone is to inhibit the development of adult characteristics. This means that the presence of juvenile hormone determines whether a larva remains a larva or develops into a pupa or an adult. In hemimetabolous insects, if juvenile hormone is present, the insect will remain a nymph after its molt. If juvenile hormone is absent, 
the nymph will molt into an adult. In holometabolist insects, a similar process occurs, but with some variation. Instead of the complete absence of juvenile hormone in the final larval instar, a reduced level of juvenile hormone induces the molt into the pupal stage. Juvenile hormone is then absent throughout the pupal stage, and the insect molts into an adult. Despite its name, juvenile hormone can also be important to the insect in the adult stage, and in adult females, it can play an important role in reproduction. Sometimes, an insect's development may be interrupted or slowed due to unfavorable conditions. This is a type of developmental arrest known as diapause, which is similar to hibernation in other animals. Exactly when diapause occurs will vary depending on the insect. During diapause, development or reproduction is halted and metabolic activity is lowered. Diapausing insects often require a combination of special circumstances to enter or terminate diapause, such as a particular day length or temperature. Unlike hibernation, which occurs only in the winter, diapause can happen in any season. For example, many insects in the tropics enter diapause to avoid hot, dry conditions or even periods of food shortage. Another biological feature that contributes to the success of insects is their ability to quickly get from place to place. If you've ever seen a cockroach run by, you've experienced firsthand just how fast an animal with six legs can move. More importantly, insects were the first animals on Earth to evolve the ability to fly. To date, insects remain the only invertebrates to have evolved wings. With the exception of mayflies, wings are structures found only in adult insects, making them the primary dispersal stage. Insects that go through ametabolic development are wingless, and there are also some insects, such as lice and fleas, that have secondarily lost their wings. Flight is a revolutionary adaptation. The increased mobility it provides is not only helpful for evading predators, but it also improves access to resources and mates. With the evolution of high mobility, insects require advanced sensory perception to interpret their environment while in motion. Yet another reason for the development of the sophisticated insect nervous system. The final biological feature that contributes to the success of insects is their ability to reproduce at an incredible rate. In fact, many insects can produce thousands of eggs throughout their lifetime. Reproductive capacity can be especially great in insects that live together in colonies, like ants and termites. Colonies of these insects contain queens who dedicate all their time and energy to reproduction, while the other members of the colony forage and raise the brood. Some termite queens can produce up to 86,000 eggs in a single day. Other than the huge numbers of eggs that some insects can produce, their relatively short generation times also contribute to their high reproductive capacity. While it takes years of development for a human to reach sexual maturity, many insects can start to reproduce immediately following eclosion to the adult stage. Due to their short generation times, insect populations have the potential to quickly adapt to changing environmental conditions. Shorter generation times usually mean faster rates of evolution because mutations can occur and spread more rapidly. By now, we have identified several key traits that contributed to insect success. But just how many types of insects are out there? In the next video, we'll guide you through some of the most ecologically significant insect orders.